With that said, we're just running a lot of 10 minutes behind. I'm going to now turn it over to uh, our supervisors for part two, based upon the feedback that you gave us uh, around writing student objectives. And I think that um, we've really come a long way in a short amount of time in this effort. So I'm going to turn it over to Rob and Adam and Susan, and I think it's every supervisor that's involved. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to them. Thank you. Before we get started, does everybody have their wheel? Agenda? Yeah. Okay. Uh, does everybody have the group? Well, this is the updated group. This is this is. Uh, hang on. There you go. Good to go. Yeah. So the rubric was updated in November 8th. We should have November 8th at the bottom. Did everybody get that? Right. They have, everybody has two resources. You've got an updated rubric, which I'll review momentarily. And uh, they can have the packet now as well. All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, we're excited to bring you phase two of this uh, objective writing training. Um, we took your feedback from our first phase that had a lot to do with looking at standards and making sure standards were aligned and have designed this morning to be accordingly. So our objectives for today, uh, or our objective for today, is to examine various core content objectives in order to evaluate them, uh, evaluate alignment to standards. So that'll be our focus for today. You should have two resources now in front of you. One of them is a packet. Um, it's two pages stapled, and there's a total of eight objectives on them. Hopefully you brought, you got that reminder about your Looms uh, wheel and you have that with you. And you now have a rubric. So in making sure that we were moving this along. Your rubric on the bottom has a bullet that's in green. The particular one we handed out did not have that. So it's the, just the last bullet. Oh, it's not in green. <laughs> it's black and white. I, I didn't, copies. where's the, where, do you have this? Yeah. Uh, so it's the last bullet. And you'll see the language meets the notion of alignment to standards. The same setup you, were, you got used to working with when we did this phase one, where we just looked at the objective. And on this, you have this presentation in your agenda. You can click onto the rubric as well in that hyperlink at the top. Okay. So last time we had you working and turning and talking immediately. Um, this time we'd like to give you an opportunity to work independently through these first. We will not put anybody on the spot at this point in time or ask you to report out what you thought. You will get time to work with those partners and talk about these. But we want to just give you about, I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna put it on for about 15 minutes, but I'll check in with you at 10 and see where you are. Work through each of the eight objectives by yourself. And there's three pieces of information that you need to report. Did that packet make its way over here? Yeah. Oh, you have. Okay, great. Okay. The blooms level, <coughs> these objectives are on the screen. The score on the rubric, with that added piece of alignment, and the feedback you would give a teacher. Try to give us two or three bullet points of what you might say to that teacher about the feedback. Perhaps one commendation and one recommendation. 
So at this point in time, this is your first phase test. What questions do you have about the next 15 minutes? <coughs> All eight. All eight. Yep. We'll go for 15. I'll check in with you at 10. Questions before I close my mouth so you can concentrate? Okay. Fun. I think we are good to move on based on what I've seen. This next piece, I'm going to come back to which group you're in um, and give you directions for your group work first. Um, you're going to be in groups of five. Um, so when you get into your groups, first and foremost, assign your roles. There will be two reporters, a reporter, and the reporter will type into the Google Doc, a facilitator, and a timekeeper. So decide on those first. Then. Share your answers for your assigned content. So when we put the group slide back up, you're going to see your name underneath one of the four contents. And those are the objectives you work with your group, on which you work with your group. Finally, determine a group response and post response on the Google Doc, which is there in that light, Queen Anne's green. Um, so the recorder can click there, find their objectives. And the ultimate goal is for you to walk out of here with, with an overall answer key. Everybody will be working on the same document. We can embed in the minutes and you can use as a resource when we talk about your next steps. So that's why we've chosen to do this electronically. Um, that'll be your collaborate part. And then when you share, it'll be your two reporters who come up and show us what you came up with. The supervisors will facilitate those conversations between the reporters um, and their colleagues. And we'll make sure we all kind of are comfortable with the three answers chosen for each one. Any questions on the next round of directions? And we'll keep them posted there for you. Okay. We'll go back to the group slide. We can do quadrants of the room. Um, and supervisors will be around to work with their contents. So, uh, go ahead. So oh, it's kind of, so here are, your, here are your groups. All right, so we have, uh, we, have a, we have a high school representative from a group. We have a middle school representative for each group. And then we have elementary in there and some supervisors. Uh, scattered throughout. So what, what we'd like to see is kind of think of, imagine this as the room, you know, science. Science would be up here in the, you know, your front left, okay? And then group team two would be back there, team three would be up here, and team four. So just imagine that as the room. What we'd like to see kind of is pull two tables together um, and kind of make those groups so that you all can all talk in a circle and go over each one of your your content. So science, you're going to go over the first page with the two um, with the two objectives there, and you'll discuss those. And then make sure that remember again, the first thing you're going to do is assign those those jobs when you get into your position. All right. So let's go ahead and get up. Let's go ahead and move to our spots and begin your begin your work. It looks really So we collaborated together to go over the science objective, the first one. Uh, we gave a, a Bloom's rating of one, a rubric rating of two. Uh, the feedback consisted of um, the question, what is the expected outcome? How would we determine student success? Use science and engineering verbiage from the standard. And then objective, the second one, uh, we gave it a Bloom's of four, a rubric of three, and the teacher feedback um, 
was that was well done. It was well, was well done. Yeah. Well, that was this one. You did ask about an assessment with a product thing. So some of the other things that we looked at, were, you know, we were looking at the verb here. Uh, so when we're looking at this particular verb, we recognize. Okay, so that's really just identification of a push or a pull, right? A force acting upon an object. So we have that. Um, the the way we thought that it would fit into blooms is really it's recognizing. Um, but if you wanted to really increase some of the rigor in terms of that, you could really look towards the standard and really the science and engineering practices. And this is something that we've been honing in with the teachers about is that we want to look at the practices for that verb. So if you look at ours, we have, uh, we have plan and conduct an investigation. That's a good one to throw in there. Or we have uh, provide evidence. So as students are doing an investigation, we could really just grab that verb from the standard and pop it in there to bring, bring, it, uh, bring it up there. Um, also just recognizing that at third grade, we're really looking at balanced and unbalanced forces. Okay, so the idea of identifying it as a push or a pull uh, is is good, but we also want to have the discussion about whether or not they're balanced and unbalanced forces. Um, so grabbing that language from the standard. And then the second part there, uh, we actually, with blooms, we saw the two levels. So it actually, we, and, uh, Tom brought this up, was we're really looking at an hour here, right? So in seventh grade, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, seventh grade, they have an hour in science. So we really have two verbs that they're going to go through. The first one is they're doing an investigation, and then later on, what they're going to do is they're analyzing and interpreting. So that's why we have the multiple levels there. We have the analyze, and then we have the evaluate. All right, and then um, as we looked at the rubric, we started to look at you know some of the things in terms of uh, how the, how we know that the students actually got it. Are they creating a presentation? Or are they um, going through some type of activity, what is, how am I checking in with the child to know whether or not they understand how um, availability of resources affects populations in the discipline, right? right? So was that kind of consistent, were those two scores consistent with what you all had produced within your uh, individual <coughs> uh, outlook of these? Was anybody did anybody look at it slightly different? And this is really, you know, no fault, we're, just, we're, we're just talking about it. So did anybody have any other interpretation of these particular standards? Did you rank them in any other grouping other than what we had discussed? Overall, overall uh, the planning piece of it too. This is an objective that would take probably multiple days to complete because I saw that plan piece of plan as well in the portion of that. So it could be multiple things on this particular objective. Yes. Okay. Yes. So they could they could spend multiple days, but maybe the outcome looks a little bit different in terms of what that day looks like. Yes. So generally speaking in science, when we're doing investigation, some most of the time they will carry over. Okay, All right. On. Thank you. Good job. Let's give a round of applause. Awesome. All right, we just put this up so Stacy will be up here for the second one. But um, <laughs> there were two reporters. So um, we thought this this objective was actually pretty solid. Uh, rubric of one to four. We gave it a 3.75 uh, just because we had a couple questions about language in there. Um, certainly a, a higher level objective. Certainly we're looking at synthesis here when we're taking primary sources and first-hand accounts and then um, using those accounts to create something so the students can demonstrate their learning. Measurable, all that. Really the only question we had, there were two things that we just felt like language maybe get cleaned up a little bit here, is that um, for a fifth grade class, we might be overshooting student-friendly language just a little bit. And we were, I think one of the questions that we may ask the teacher is three out of six. So the, the objective says, 
and create a storyboard or comic to explain at least three out of six ways how the triangle trade impacted. I, I we didn't know what the six was. I know the social studies guy might just be nitpicking that, but it just we would have probably just changed it to explain three ways. Um, however, we all agreed we would probably watch the lesson first because maybe the teacher is setting it up some way where there's six areas that she wanted the kids to look at, and that just isn't readily available in the objective. But overall. Uh, we felt it was pretty solid, higher level, had most of the stuff. We would only have a couple clarifying questions. And Adam agreed with us. Definitely. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, we, had, we did have a good discussion. I'll, I'll go over that one after we do the, the second one here. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the second one, um, <laughs> we questioned the, the rigor of the standard as well as, it, as, well as its alignment. Um, for Bloom's taxonomy, we gave it a level two with comprehension. While I was looking at interpreting, they were only interpreting in order to understand. They weren't really going past that. Um, for the level, in, with the rubric, we set a level two. It was somewhat aligned. Um, we were definitely touching on the American Revolution. We were looking at you know, some of the if effects. But because um, of where the objective went, which goes into our feedback, it wasn't completely aligned to the rigor of the standard. Um, our feedback, we one of the commendations that we could give the teacher is that they did specify what which aspect of the American Revolution they were looking at, um, taking a look at the Boston Massacre. But we would have questioned how the um, stand objective would have been measured. We questioned the um, conflicting perspectives, maybe use that instead of, comp uh, instead of saying different perspectives, say look to look at the conflicting perspectives, and am I missing anything? I think going into this, I think everybody from the group was, was mostly on the same page. Um, and you know, like Stacy mentioned, they are on opposite ends of the spectrum. But I think one of the most important things that we kind of garnered out of our conversation was, you know, what do we do to, to help the teacher? And that's the, the teacher feedback part, and this is a conversation. So the lesson could be a very good lesson. And again, we talked about this last time. Um, could be a very good lesson. But then in that, in that conversation you're having with the teacher, if it's in a post-observation conference, what can we do to make this a little bit better? We throw conflicting in there, and then we throw uh, another verb in there, you know, how did this escalate the war um, between the British and, and the, the colony. So it's just that, that feedback that you give, and then you know, it's just ongoing, and then that ho hopefully will translate into better objective rating you know, throughout the year. So. It's good, good conversation. Thanks. Good job. Thank you. On the map, Diane's a, a reporter for our group, so I'll turn it over to her for again. So, yeah, I got this by default since I was going out anyway. So, <laughs> that's why people threw stuff at me. It was already. So, um, we looked at, and we were actually all in agreement with the first objective that students will interpret ID. Oops, sorry. Thank you. That students will be able to multiply the two digit numbers by one digit number. We actually were in agreement um, that the Bloom's level was level three for the apply. Um, and we were um, a little bit at first discussion all over the place um, with our rubric score. Um, we had twos, we had threes, we had an argument for four. Um, and then after discussion, we actually settled on a three. Um, our feedback was we gave a positive that the objective was nicely aligned to both standards um, because it covered both the procedural fluency and the application of the co of concept. Um, where we thought for improvement for a four would have been was if they had included some of the strategies um, because uh, the actually objective says using a variety of strategies, but just being able to put in some examples of some of the strategies that they would have been utilizing during that lesson that day. And so you notice in this particular lesson, you saw two standards aligned to the concept. In elementary math, all the way up through sixth grade math, you're going to see often a, a, a dual standard alignment, one to address the, uh, uh, the procedural fluency and one to address the application of the, of the concepts. And Rob, didn't you also share that you had actually seen this lesson and that this was actually, this objective was actually a mid-lesson 
among several to get to this ultimate sta the ultimate standards of both. Sure. So, the, so in, in May, the, uh, especially third, fourth, and fifth grade standards, it takes time to get all the different strategies taught. So you may walk in and see them teaching the area model today, but in previous two weeks, they may have covered the number line and they break apart strategy. So depending on where they are in the unit, the varied strategies could, could, uh, could differ based on the, the location in the curriculum. Then the next piece I'll just start out there, are, are we, in this particular case, are we expecting the kids to use all of those strategies, or one of those strategies, or two of those strategies, and that's something we, we can work with the teacher on to kind of fine tune that objective. Fine. Second objective was aligned to grade 10 for geometry, and students will be able to prove the triangle sum theorem and apply the triangle inequity theorem. Um, we gave it two, actually, levels. Um, we thought that the prove was a level six for create and that the apply was a level three for apply. Um, again, some positive feedback that we gave was that the standard and objective were aligned, um, but then we, because we gave it a two, um, it needed to include how students would address which model and how students would apply those, theor those theories in order to um, give it a three or a four. So again, this is a class I actually saw to in the follow-up Adam's talk about making sure that we talk to the teachers about this. The lesson was the actually lesson was very good. The, uh, the the teacher got stumped with the how do I put the how if it's a discovery-based lesson? Because the point of the lesson was to help kids discover each of these theories and apply them in the situation. So we just talked about you know talking about which um, proof model should the kids be using. And that could be the how they're getting to prove in the, the different theorems. I won't put anyone on the spot to define the. Uh, Inequality, some theorem. Inequality, Thank triangle theorem. You guys got any questions? Thank you all. Thank you, team. Teresa? Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are you coming? No, Laura. Oh, Laura. Oh. Sorry, miss that one. Okay, so um, I have the first objectives. Um, it's from first grade, and we gave it a level two for Bloom's um, taxonomy. Um, the word describe is listed in both knowledge and comprehension, but in order to describe the characters using key details, they have to demonstrate um, a level of comprehension there. Um, we said that the rubric, uh, the objective, was a two to three um, on the rubric that so was and we were happy with the objective. Some feedback that we would give was that one, there was a very clear alignment with the objective and the standard, and that the objective was very clear on what the students needed to know and to be able to do. And some of the professional growth uh, feedback that we pro would provide is that the objective is really missing the why the skill is important and how. How, how are you gonna know as a teacher um, if a student actually master the objective or not. Is there anything you wanted to add? I think you did an, an amazing job. This particular objective comes directly from the yep. reading resource that Standard. the uh, yep. reading specialists worked really hard on creating standards to objectives. Um, they, we, we had a, a whole day of looking at them again um, last week. So there are some things that we can't add in for, for, for teachers to use because it's really dependent on your lesson. But, um, but yes, it, it's a, a to me, I would say that this was a, uh, a solid um, objective that, again, when you're conferencing with your teachers, that you can simply say, um, can you add the why? Ultimately, we want the understanding of the text, right? That's why they're, that's where the de they're describing the characters. Very good. All right. Good job. Oh, oh, you had the last uh, standard uh, objective, which was to teach the class character analysis or climax and resolution. Well, uh, first of all, when we looked at Bloom, there wasn't a zero, so it was not aligned. So we, most of us sitting back there, we gave it a zero. In terms of the rubric, it was definitely a one. Um, and we did the feedback, it was not aligned. Um, we uh, we have to start with the alignment, and one of the things we even said, let's start with the alignment first, make sure that it's aligned, and then we can go, it would be easy, of course, go to Zoom and, and the rubric. And of course, this teacher decided to see the system to write objectives. So this was the, 
the worst one we have. And we felt that, you know. And, <laughs> and one thing we, we talked about, um, Kevin and I had a little bit of insight. We're given the objective. You know, usually we see an objective before when we observe the lesson. And then we, after we've seen the lesson, we can see some of the things. But it's giving the objective and the standard. It's hard for us to imply a lot of things that may have taken place in the lesson, but we didn't see them. So that was a really insightful discussion we had at the back end. <clears throat> It's important to remember that when you have these discussions with teachers about rubric, you're going to have them within the context of having observed them, informally or formally. So our purpose for the wheel and this activity uh, and the rubric is to kind of guide these coaching conversations that you have to have with teachers so that every uh, uh, principal, dean, specialist is using the same language when they're talking to teachers about objectives, standards, and alignment. And so our work here um, in the prior ANS and this ANS is doing the best, uh, or hopefully has done its mission in making sure everybody's using the same language to guide these coaching conversations. Um, we know the adult learner uh, responds better to coaching than we're at when they're asked to reflect and think about what they did. Um, we know in particular the millennial responds better to coaching in, in working through feedback, and that's really important. Our work is to bring in uh, new teachers as well and bring them up um, along the lines of objectives, standards, assessment, alignment. So we hope that you found these resources worthwhile um, and this activity worthwhile. Your, our next steps here, and uh, Mr. Pluski did touch on them. We'll just reiterate. Oh, back. Are there, we got great feedback on the packet on which you worked. Um, Mr. Dunn encouraged us to switch blooms in the rubric score so that you're scoring it first and then talking about blooms. Um, any other feedback or things you'd like us to consider in sprucing these two resources, the rubric and the packet, up before we um, officially release it? I have a general comment. Right. I don't think we touched much on um, We had that social study objective mm -hmm. where they did a lot of good interdisciplinary literacy with that with the ELA. Okay. I think we see more of that too read in yeah. Paul's curriculum with some of the. Uh, uh, the content, the multiple content, that's going to give kids extra practice too. Oscar would really do some of the things we're asking to do with the ELA and social studies. I thought that was great, and no one did that. I thought that's what I've been looking for because it really give those kids opportunities to have multiple tries at it in different contexts. So Excellent. that was a big yeah, that was Thank a big you. Thing. Yep, that how they can kind of fuel the conversation with cross curricular alignment. Great. Other immediate thoughts, and, and we're going to let you digest and reflect, and, and I'm going to, I can be the point of contact on any feedback you have of what you'd like to change or adjust or recommendations. Um, but anything for the good of the group you want to share now that we as supervisors can be thinking about as we make our final edits and revisions to these documents. Okay. As you think on anything, as you digest the rest of the week, as you get into next week, if you could just shoot me, it doesn't to be in any kind of particular format, shoot me an email if there's anything you want us to consider or change with the rubric or the packet. Um, and I'll make sure that before you leave for Thanksgiving break that the principals have these resources in their hand with any final feedback. Um, next steps, uh, we have shared it with principals. Teacher specialists and deans are going to get the phase one and phase two of this uh, of the objective training in their meeting at the end of the month. Uh, Michael and Rob are going to leave that. So everything you saw today, your teacher specialists will see at the end of this month. Uh, you can use your resources to start planning for school day PD. You the resources that, that, that we get to you uh, to start planning PD for your schools in December and January. And the supervisors will support that with content-based PD at the end of January on those district-wide days. So we're at a point where you can start talking in terms of your professional development plan with how you want to roll this out uh, in your schools. Any questions there on next steps? So just for clarification, yes, this activity will not be used by supervisors in January for the district. We can use these before. You can use those activities, yep, because supervisors are going to go content-based and we'll, we'll pull, we have a whole bank of them. We'll be sure to Use what we've given you for your schools. That okay, folks? That's, that's a good question, Jen. So what, what they've tried to model is just so you can replicate it back at your school. Yeah. So when we do the same thing with the teacher specialist, then we're going to build some internal capacity to help you, and then they'll bring that back and 
Now you, we want to make sure you've had it first, and then they have it second, so they can bring it back. Your building capacity, and then how you want to approach that within your school. Because I know many of you are have been touching on it and waiting for the feedback that we've gotten from you, um, so that you can deepen that conversation with your, with your folks. And I would say, if you want, uh, if you're going to pick other standards, that because some of those are high school, right. middle school, right? If you were to pick ele more elementary-based standards out of our content, and you wanted to ask for feedback from us to say, do you agree with what I'm scoring? Uh, you know, I'm open to it. And I'm sure my colleagues are. Yeah. Yep. Sure. If you want one of the supervisors to come out during one of those initial things, please reach out to them. We'd be more than happy to do it. Be a part of it. Any other feedback? It's good stuff, gang. This is small shifts make a big difference. And we know across all of our visits, we gotta we gotta kick up the level of the rigor. And what I loved about this activity is is helping you give that coaching feedback to teachers. And I think the more that you engage in that dialogue, and then you're gonna start to see a slow shift. Uh, one thing I want to clarify because this came up within the assistant principals. Are we going to give teachers a score on a rubric? Well, no. We're not going to give them, right, I'm a four, I'm a three, but it's meant to be in a dialogue and a conversation so that they can improve and they know what improvement looks like. Now, if you get down the road and internally within your leadership team, just within, hey, what are we starting to see? We have a lot of ones and twos or threes and fours. We should start to see that needle improve over time. And that'll be part of that model. Is this helpful? Useful? Something you can take back, help you improve feedback in the future. Any other questions? We're slightly behind. <clears throat>